Hello everybody and welcome to another Blender tutorial. I am Vitek from Versal Studio and this time we will do something lazy and simple. We will go back to the basics of the animation nodes. Some instancing, influence falloffs and material blending. You see the effect, we want to make it, so let's not waste any more time and jump right into the Blender. Start with creating some tile design. If you want to make the hexagonal grid as me, add a circle with just 6 vertices, subdivide it several times so we have more resolution for the actual circle in the middle, extrude and scale it down and then use a circle operator from the loop tools add-on. The rest of it is up to your creative brain. If you want to go for high quality visual experience, consider using bevel or subsurf modifiers, or even both at the same time. And don't forget to give everything a proper name, and fix the shading with auto smooth. If you have a proper beast of a PC and want to play with big girls, use even the weighted normal modifier, that should repair the mess from the bevel. The next step is filling the hole with a cylinder, that will later morph into a sphere. Don't overdo it with the resolution, 16 sides are enough and Subsurf will do the rest later. But switch to the edit mode and try to make the geometry as even as possible, so the sphere will look right. Also make sure to apply all the transforms. Make it a AAA with bevel and Subsurf again. The magic of spherifying it is just the cast modifier. If you don't like spheres, use shape keys, but at the beginning I said I want to be lazy. Ok, we can move to the animation nodes now, so a new 3 with proper auto execution. Start with instancing both objects, hide the originals and check the full copy to share also the modifiers. Well, we don't know how many of them we need, nor where they should be. Let's create a grid. For the honeycomb pattern it should be just a bunch of triangles. Add again a circle with 6 vertices, this time with triangle fun filling. In edit mode delete two opposing vertices and rotate it 90 degrees to create this black widow shape. Throw two array modifiers on it with activated merging, one for x axis and one for y. Hide this object in render. and access its vertices locations with mesh input node. This solved the riddle for number and places. So use object transform output to set the locations. The instances are way too big, so scale them down. Now the fun part of math you are waiting for. To move the objects up and down we will add some vector to the cylinder locations and subtract the same vector from the hexagon locations. Combine this mysterious vector from individual values but use only the Z. Awesome, but the stuff that truly separates the beginners from noobs is controlling precisely which ones will be moved and which ones not. Add a spherical empty object to the scene and object control falloff to the node editor. To convert the green dot to the actual number, use evaluate node based on locations and click the little list icon. When you connect all the lines, you still can see anything in the viewport. I don't want to enable the always update, so I will create new triggers just for the empty object. Now it looks like something, just the spherifying is missing. Select one cylinder and find the factor of the cast modifier. Copy the data path and use it in attribute output node. The falloff strengths are exactly from 0 to 1, which is really convenient. You can play with the Z values and falloff interpolation to get the result you desire. I like to have some randomness everywhere, so I will go above and beyond and even multiply the Z values with some random numbers.
Now the shaders. Before we start, wake up the EV properly, so we see something resembling a render. The hexagon can be whatever you want, no magic here. You already know me, so some random color it is, and I am feeling extra willing today, so I will shove some texture to the roughness. The cylinder shader will be more dramatic, because I want to transition between two different shaders. One for the cylinder and one for the sphere. The cylinder could be something metallic. with messed up normals for a change. The sphere will be straight up glass. You need to change the blend mode in the shader options for this to work. Ok, now the mix shader. We need to somehow send the fall off from the animation node to the shader node. And we can't use the material output, because we want to have a different value for every object. But we can use the object pass index that nobody uses. Send it through the attribute output, because I don't know if there is a dedicated node for it. A small problem is that the pass index is just an integer and the strength is between 0 and 1. The brain flex solution is to multiply the value by 1000 before sending and divide it by 1000 again in the shader. Now we are in the hard part, so no shame in the slowing down the video. The lights inside the spheres. Locate the original cylinder, go to the edit mode and add a really small cube. Put a new material on it. We need to tell the cast modifier to ignore it, so invert the selection and add the selection to a new vertex group. Finally tell the cast modifier to use just this group. After this you have to refresh the instancer in the animation nodes by turning off and on the copy full object. Well, the actual material isn't that special. Use the texture coordinates of the empty object and run them through the spherical gradient texture. Then mix some nice colors in the color ramp and boost the value in hue saturation node. At the end, just place somewhere the camera and animate it empty. That's all from me now. Thank you very much for watching and till the next time, happy blending.